Platt Arena here in Huntington, Indiana. Uh, thank you for joining us for this contest between the Marion University Knights and your Huntington University Foresters. I'm Noah Tobias along with my good friend Aaron Fahler. Uh, and Aaron, uh, we're coming into this game. Huntington uh, is coming in 15 and 12 on the season overall and also 6 and 9 in conference. Marion also coming is also coming into this game 12 and 15 overall and also uh, 3 and 12 in this conference. Not exactly where Marion wants to be at right now, sitting at the bottom of the conference, uh, but Huntington really can't look at that. They really just have to come in here uh, and just play their game overall because you never know what the Crossroads League is going to bring you on any given day. Exactly. And neither team really is where they want to be. Obviously, Huntington will want to be you know, better than uh, sitting in the middle of the pack and even on the bottom half of the middle right now is sitting at seventh in the in conference, as you mentioned. And Marion definitely not having the year that they've had in the past or years that they've had in the past are capable of what they're really playing up to. And earlier in the season, we saw Huntington go into Indianapolis and go to Marion and end up winning by 10, 99 to 89. So they're going to expect to get the season sweep here today. Uh, but definitely it's going to be a good game, as you mentioned. Yeah, one of the things that uh, really needs to be noted is that number 24, Derek Hawthorne, Second leading scorer for Marion is out. Uh, we're really not sure if he is, has an injury or if he's sick and just didn't come on the bus. Uh, but that is definitely something that you need to look for uh, coming into this game. Derek uh, was averaging 18.4 game, uh, 18 points a game for Marion. So really, uh, that's gonna that's gonna affect these Marion Knights a lot. Yeah, definitely a huge loss for their team. Seeing your second leading scorer. Uh, not being able to dress. We're not really, again, not really sure what's going on there. Uh, but definitely that's something the Foresters will want to take advantage of. And on the Forester side of things, they're really the top three scores have kind of changed off and on throughout the season. Mike Bush right now leading the team with 16.3 points a game. Daniel Wool with 16. Even T and Tyler Aarons with 15.5. And, and also Connor Platt rounding out the double digit scoring on the season with 11. So look to see big games out of those four. And also Mason Coverstone. Uh, averaging just under 10 with eight points a game right now. Yeah, Huntington really just kind of coming off of a, uh, a really kind of a disappointing loss, really. Uh, they did uh, go to St. Francis and lose on Tuesday. Uh, it was pretty tough to see that loss, but uh, they played hard, and really one of the things that uh, hurt them early on in that game was because it was in the first half they weren't able to make they're gimme shots like they have been. They weren't right. getting those 50-50 balls. Uh, and so when you're not getting those early on, it, it's tough to recover back from that. And really, that just kind of progressed throughout that game as well. Right. Anytime, as you said, you called them a gimme shot. And like, it's a gimme because it's a gimme. You should be getting that right away, no problem, no questions asked. That's what they need to fix here today. Yeah, definitely. And this is the game uh, to fix that with. It's also a game to really just find out different things that they can improve on going into the last couple of games of the year. Uh, they have, they're playing Tuesday at home versus Taylor, uh, and then also they're playing on Saturday at Mount Vernon. So that's really going to be tough for them. Uh, and they are, uh, the PA announcer is talking about a former Forester who has cancer at the moment. And that Forrester is actually in the building as we speak, and a round of applause for him. Hopefully, hoping that he gets better and just sending prayers to him and his family. And we will be beginning the starting lineups here very shortly. Uh, first off with the Marion Knights out of Indianapolis. Uh, starting at a forward, number 15, Patrick Bell, he's a senior. He is 6'10", and he's averaging, uh, sorry, he's averaging 5.7 points a game. Also number four, he's a guard, Wes Stowers. Uh, I'm sorry, Stowers. He's a sophomore, he's 5'10", uh, and he's averaging 19.4 points a game. He is their leading scorer for the season. Number 10, he's a guard. His name is James Crowley. He's a senior, he's six foot even and he is averaging 6.2 points a game for the Knights. Also number 20 forward, Sam Gaiman. He is a freshman, he's 6'7", and he's averaging 8.7 points a game. And then wrapping up the starting line for the Knights is number 22, he's a guard, his name is Curtis Green, and he's a junior. Six foot, and he's averaging 8.8 .8 points a game. Uh, Aaron, tell us a little bit about Huntington starters. Right, actually, no, before we get into that, it'll be uh, good to mention that uh, 
as we talked about, Wes Stowers for Marion is actually second in the conference right now in scoring with 19.4 points a game. That's right. So yep. he's, he's really came in uh, and, and really broke out as a freshman and really continued that into a sophomore season. He's going to be continue to be a great player for Marion down the stretch. Definitely. But now as we get into Huntington's lineup here, if you're, uh, if you're a regular attender to the games here in Platte Arena or if you regularly watch online or listen on the radio, you're going to know a lot of these names. Number three, Connor Platt from Huntington, Indiana, Huntington North High School product. He's the freshman, a 6'2 guard. Mike Bush, another guy we talk about a lot, a uh, junior out of South Bend, Indiana, and in John Adams High School. Number 20, Mason Coverstone, the sophomore from Columbia City. Uh, Tyler Aarons, number 44, a sophomore transfer this year from Muncie Central High School. And number 45, Daniel Wool, the lone senior in this starting lineup from Columbia City as well. Or excuse me, from Columbia City. So the regular starting five, they've been the starting five here for most of the season. So a lot of chemistry that the, these five have developed and definitely expect to, for that to continue in this game here as they look to take on the Marion Knights. About ready to start off with the tip off here in Plata Arena. Should be a, a really good game between both of these teams. Mike Bush just absolutely tearing it up all season long with his assists. Uh, nobody has even come close to him uh, in both of his categories that he's been leading in all season long. He's leading in uh, total assists and assists per game. Just great, great to know that he is such a team player and that he is here at Huntington. Also, Dan Wool, another senior. Just had a great four years here at Huntington. Senior night is Tuesday for the boys. And for the girls as well, it's on Wednesday. And as you mentioned, uh, Daniel Wool, he's actually leading the Foresters in rebound steals and blocks per game. So really, he's a guy that needs to get a big start early and get going often, really. There's Daniel Wool passing it back out to Tyler Aarons, missing a three-point attempt. Rebounded by number 22, Green. That's a very rare miss from Tyler Aarons. Actually, uh, third in the conference in field goal percentage overall, 57%. But he is also, uh, excuse me, 53% from three. So he has just really been uh, phenomenal from both ends of the floor. Green gets blocked by Mason Coverstone. Coverstone is able to get that rebound, and now Mike Bush has the ball coming up the floor. Bush finally getting over to Tyler Aarons. Bush giving it down to Daniel Wool. Daniel ready to go to work, but passes it back out to Connor Platt, but it tipped away. Now Stowers able to get an easy breakaway layup. Yeah, not the start that uh, Coach Platt wanted. You could hear him yelling at his offense to get, get into the offense, get moving. We saw a little, little bit of stagnation on his first couple possessions. Tyler Aarons now going to work. Not able to make that basket as well. Number 20, Guyman, able to get that rebound. He has the ball. Guyman just weaving in and out of the Forster's defense. Crowley tried to drive in on Mason Coverstone. Guyman missing the three-point shot. Rebounded by Tyler Aarons, but now Mike Bush has the ball. Not the greatest pass that Mike Bush has tried to force in there. Green has the ball. Now Stowers not able to make that, but a tip-in basket by Bell. And Coach Platt's going to take a quick 30-second timeout. He is not happy with how his team has started offensively or defensively. They're not getting uh, really not. They're not working through the offense, getting good looks offensively. They've made some uh, some errant passes that haven't gone well for them, and they're not really getting back in transition defense either. Yeah, they have about one or two turnovers already here in the in less than two minutes of the opening half, and so it's. It's interesting to see that Tyler Aarons already was not able to make his wide open three point shot, which like you said earlier, he is usually automatic from three point land, but then he wasn't able to make his turnaround jump shot as well here on just during their last possession. Ball back in play for the Foresters. Mike Bush with the basketball bringing it up. Tyler Aarons now over to Platt. Back to Aarons for three. That's no good yet again. Rebounded by Green. Yeah, another miss from him, but I'm you know, not, definitely not upset seeing that. I like to see him shoot from outside, especially when he's open. If they're going to leave him open, let him shoot. Guyman able to go right on in against 
Mason Coverstone and Tyler Aarons both. Lead is now up to six. Mike Bush draws a foul against number 20, Sam Guyman. Yeah, good job there for Mike Bush. It's not often the smaller guy has an advantage due to his size, but he's able to get in there and draw some contact. Bush with the ball and also first 30 seconds on the shot clock. Passing it up to Daniel Wool. Back out to Mason Coverstone now to Platt. He puts up a three, no good. Rebounded by Stowers. Stowers goes in against Mike Bush, goes in for a layup, and it's good. Lee is now to eight. We saw a great move there from Stowers, showing up the junior, Mike Bush. Trevor Lockwood about ready to check in for the Forcers. Daniel Wool goes up and finally gets two points on the board. Drew some contact there as well, looking for a foul, didn't get the call, but nevertheless, it was a good finish for him. Stowers with the basketball. He's a great ball handler, gives it over to Crowley. Crowley has a jump shot over Wool, rebounded by Bell. Bell goes up against Tyler Ahrens, goes up for two and is fouled by Ahrens. That will be Tyler Ahrens' first foul and team's first. Patrick Bell only averaging 5.7 points and 6.2 rebounds a game, but really for uh, with his frame, 6'10", really, he's a really big guy and really athletic too, does a great job. You don't see that out of that many guys at, th at his size at this level being able to do both of those things pretty well. Trevor Lockwood does check in after the first free throw for Tyler Ahrens. Tyler not really bringing a lot of energy to this court starting off tonight's game. Bell is able to make both of his free throws. Lead is back to eight. Mike Bush with the basketball. Thinking about driving in. Gets it over to Connor Platt. Dan Wool has it. Gets it down to Lockwood. Back out to Coverstone, and that is no good. Rebounded by Bill. Came right into his hands from Trevor Lockwood. Now number 22, Green with the basketball. Trying to drive inside. Mason Coverstone able to stop him. Bell with the ball, now back to Green. The Foresters are now 0 for 4 from 3, which is really uncharacteristic of them, especially seeing misses from Mason Coverstone and Connor Platt, who are just really, really automatic from out there. And that last basket was pretty tough because Mason Coverstone didn't switch completely. He stuck with him until he got under the basket, and Green kept on going out, and Mason just completely stopped. Daniel Wool not able to make his jump shot, but rebounded by Lockwood. Mike Bush. Getting in to Connor Platt. Coverstone, Platt, and now Bush yet again. Mike Bush does draw a foul against the Marion Knights. That foul does go against number 15, Patrick Bell, his first team second. Looks like a quick media timeout right here. Lead is to 10 for the Marion Knights. Stick with us to see how the Forcers will return. Being a part of the film department here at Huntington University is amazing. We have brilliant professors who are willing to teach us everything that they've known from being out in the field. First semester last year, I got the opportunity to work on the department film, uh, Gift of Hope, where we had actual professionals in the field today come and work with Huntington students on a film. Students here at Huntington University have an opportunity to focus on story and they discover universal themes that matter to everyone, and they're able to integrate their faith into their filmmaking. This is very unique. It's something special about Huntington. Recently, we took a trip to Chicago for our seniors to be able to cast talent for their senior films, and there was such an array of talent available to them. It's great to be close to such a wonderful urban production center. One of the things that gets me so excited is to see the quality of the student films and how they improve every year. We're sending such strong filmmakers out. Welcome back to Platt Arena. 15 minutes still left to go here in this first half. Forsters are trailing 2-12. to 12. 
Forsters have gotten up quite a few shots, but not able to make all of them. Yeah, very odd to see this team only convert on one shot so far in the first four and a half minutes of play. And yeah, the only two points that have been scored is off of Daniel Wool's really acrobatic layup. There's another two points for Daniel Wool. Nice feed in by Mason Coverstone. Yeah, that's a great job there from Daniel Wool sealing his man, Andrew Jordan, down in the post. Jordan does come in as a substitution for the Marion Knights. Green with the basketball. Tries to drive inside against Coverstone, not able to be swatted away, but Daniel Wool gets the rebound, pushing the basketball up the court. Daniel Wool is trying to take it himself, but puts it back to Lockwood. Little give and go action now to Coverstone. Assist Daniel Wool. Yeah, I like seeing that play out of Daniel Wool. Definitely could have taken that shot himself and got two points for his team, but we really like seeing him pass him on it off for uh, the better option there, Mason Coverstone. Number two, Earls. <coughs> now Green with the basketball. Earls and Jordan both came in during that last uh, media timeout. Now there's number 20, Guyman misses and rebounded by Coverstone. Mike Bush with the basketball, passing it up to Connor Platt. Bush with the basketball, now to Lockwood, back to Bush. Coverstone trying to direct traffic down low. Bush with the ball, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Bush goes in, tries a little dump down pass to Connor Platt, and a jump ball will be called, and that will go over to Marion. Just haven't really seen very clean, crisp basketball yet from Huntington. Number 15, Patrick Bell, and number 10, James Crowley, come back in for the Knights. Also another substitution for Huntington. Number 11, Devin Murder, checks in for Connor Platt. Number four, Stowers with the basketball, passing it off to Crowley. Now to number two, Earls. Bell with the basketball, being blocked by Trevor Lockwood. Still eight seconds on the shot clock. Back out to Jordan, and that's good for two. Yeah, even though that ended up in two points there for Marion, great individual defense from Trevor Lockwood on the post. That's an area where he's really, really improved over the last couple of years. Well, he's, Trevor Lockwood has honestly had a great couple of games here. He had his injury in the middle of the season, able to come back with a couple of great games, and there's two points for the big man. Yeah, nice, nice pass to the inside from Mike Bush, and great finish there from Trevor Lockwood. Crowley with the basketball, now out to Earls, and he makes his three. Lead is back up to nine points for the Knights. Bush with the basketball, getting a screen for tr from Trevor Lockwood. Trevor gives the ball to Daniel, tries to go to work. Ball is stolen away by Tim Crowley. Crowley misses the layup, rebounded by Murder, but gets stolen away by Crowley yet again. Earls with the basketball, three-point shot is good. Ty Platt is definitely not happy with what he's seen. We will take a break with him here with 12.27 left in this first half. We will be right back. So Fusion Media is kind of this idea to bring broadcasting and film production together. Just doing media, but maybe not in the news field or in the radio field as broadcasting was. With Fusion Media, you're not stuck in this cookie cutter route to become a news anchor or a radio DJ. There's so much more you can do with it. Fusion Media is a way to take those everyday experiences and bring them to the students now in the, in the moment. I would say there's so many opportunities for you guys to make an instant impact. We have HTV, we have Livestream, we have Fuse FM. Like, we're ready for you right now. It's so exciting as a freshman to be able to come in and right away be doing hands-on things, like being a part of HTV and the radio station. And for a freshman coming in, that's so exciting to be able to do those things. It's just really new. It's the newest idea that's been out. So no other school is going to offer a broadcast fusion. 
Back here at Platinum Arena, your Foresters trail by 12, 8 to 20. Really uncharacteristic for these Foresters. And Marion is just hitting about everything that they're shooting. Yeah, great start from Marion. It's worth noting, Marion has not won inside Platinum Arena since 2012, so they're going to look to end that streak here today. Mike Bush with the basketball. Trying to direct traffic as he gives the ball over to Devin Murray. Now over to Trevor Lockwood. And that's, that's just a textbook approach by Trevor Lockwood. He saw that uh, Bell was right in front of him, uh, really wanting to take that charge. Trevor Lockwood picks up his dribble and does a nice uh, bank shot. And over to Guyman. Bell inside working on Trevor Lockwood. Goes up and able to make that shot. I would definitely say that that was a lucky shot, and I think he'll agree with me. <laughs> How that came off of his hand was, was so awkward. Kyle Platt now back to Mike Bush. Devin Murder not using the screen from Tyler Aarons. Ball almost stolen away by Jordan. Tyler does not have his dribble, so he needed to pass that to Mike. Yeah, good recovery, though, from the, from the sophomore. And that will be a foul, yep. Yep, yep number 22, Guyman will pick up his first foul and I'm sorry, 22 Green. Green just kind of went right on top of Mike Bush, didn't have the ball at all. And so I, I feel like that was a fairly easy call for the official. Yeah, anytime you go over, over someone's back when they're on the floor is going to be a pretty easy call. Bush with the basketball, trying to look for Tyler Green down under, but he'll take a jump shot himself and that's good. Yeah, it's good to get him started early too. We've seen him really take off in the second half in a few different games here inside Platt Arena, but anytime he gets going early, it makes it a lot harder for any defense and opens things up for the rest of the offense. Earls with the basketball, stolen away by Mike Bush. Tip, the pass was tipped by Trevor Lockwood. Devin Murray with the basketball, now to Tyler Aarons. Ball rattles out of the rim. Yeah, great ball movement and transition there, but it's not uh, Tyler Aarons cannot capitalize on it. That's really that's that's been hurting him so far. And we're going to see Austin Carazia now looking to check in, likely for Aarons. <laughs> Crowley, I, he is just going absolutely off tonight. Murder with the basketball now to Platt. Again, trying to get it down to Tyler Aarons and Trevor Lockwood is what they're really trying to do. Aarons with the basketball now goes up and that's good. Foul was called on number 23, Andrew Jordan, his first personal foul, team fourth. Austin Carazia does come in for Trevor Lockwood. And number four, Wes Stowers, comes in for number 10, Crowley. Tyler Aarons is at the line, shooting his and one. Hopefully this can be a spark here for Huntington, seeing well, and for Tyler Aaron, seeing one go in for him. Aaron's free throw is up and good. Lead is now down to 10 points. Green with the basketball bringing it up for the Knights. Over to Stowers. Green now, and that's good. Man, Marion is just making everything. Mike is just kind of shaking his head, thinking, I, I mean, this is just absolutely crazy. Kyle Platt now with the basketball back to Bush. Get the screen from Tyler Aarons. Jordan didn't even know that Tyler had the ball, and Tyler makes him pay for that. Yeah, good job again inside from Tyler Aarons getting, getting his shot. Earls with the basketball back over to Green. Now to Crowley. I'm sorry, to Stowers. Jordan with the basketball going in to Tyler Aarons. He gets the basketball back, tries to pass it in midair, but stolen away by Carazia. Yeah, good defense in the post there from the Foresters. From Kyle Platt and Austin Carazia. Murder passes it to Bush. Now to Carazia. He thought about the three point shot. Aarons goes up and misses. And the four Stowers has the ball coming up for the Knights. Number two, Earls now. Earls goes up for a layup, no good. Great defense by Devin Murder, rebounded by Karazia. Bush to Murder, not able to control it all that well. Now out to Bush, to Aarons. He puts up a three, that's no good. That is short. Karazia now. 
ball just touches the sideline, so that will go to Marion. Number 15, Bell substitutes in for Marion. Also, number 20, Coverstone. Number 45, Wool. And number three, Platt. All come in for the Foresters. Yeah, and Tyler Aaron's really not happy with himself. Just very, very visibly frustrated. And he's going to need to figure something out here to get that shot going from outside. Yeah, and it's tough because you're always used to making those kind of shots, especially when you're wide open. There's Stowers with the long three ball attempt. 17 to 31, your Foresters are trailing the Marion Knights. Uh, I don't know what this would do to the standings if Marion would end up winning here tonight in Platt Arena. That would definitely bump Huntington down a couple of spots. Again, nothing able to go in for the Foresters. Stowers with the ball. Now to Green and back to Stowers, trying to get it into Bell, but instead Bell comes up for a screen. Nice step down pass to number 20, Guyman. Yeah, and if, if Marion is able to continue this lead and knock off Huntington today, it, it definitely makes things interesting. I mean, um, Marion's not going to necessarily improve. They're only 3-12 and 12 in conference. They'd put them at 4-12, and 12, but it would drop Huntington to 6-10 and 10 overall. So if, if Huntington lost today and Grace was able to pick up a win, uh, let's see, at home against Saint, or excuse me, Spring Arbor, they would be tied for that uh, seventh spot. Or excuse me, se yeah, seventh and eighth spots. Uh, with Huntington having a game against Taylor, Taylor has really been just on a roll recently. Stowers has the ball for the Knights trying to get into Bell, and he does. Bell goes to work against Tyler Aarons, missing that basket, rebounded by Wool, all the way up to Mason Coverstone. Just a, a really ill-advised pass by Bush. Substitution for Marion, number 10, James Crowley comes in. Really tough basketball game so far for the Foresters, really not being able to find anything that's going down inside the hoop. Uh, and really, this is a team that I would say is probably at their best when they're out running, uh, playing in transition, but so far they haven't been able to convert on many of those plays. So really, even though that's what they like to do, that's probably what they're best at. They're really going to need to sit down and settle on their offense for a few possessions, get some buckets that way, and then come out and start running the transition again. Literally making everything in sight. Green able to make yet another three and contested very well, Aarons did. And so now Aarons has the ball over to Coverstone. He launches a three. No good, and that goes above the backboard, so that will be Marion's ball. Before Stowers bringing the basketball up for the Knights. 19 to 36. Knights leading by 17 points. Stowers with the shot. No good. Rebounded by Wool. Bush with the basketball now. Well, I, think, I think Guyman might have got away with an illegal screen there in that possession, but doesn't matter too much. And great find there from Mike Bush. Mason Coverstone inside. Yeah, Bush doing what he does best, passing the ball. Stowers now over to Crowley. Crowley almost tripped up by Aarons. Crowley puts up a jump shot and makes it. And again, Con Connor Platt is not, you know, five feet away from him. He is in his face. I mean, th there's not a lot more that you can do with that. Tyler Aarons gets the ball stolen away. Another ill-advised pass by Bush. Yeah, for, Foresters are not playing bad defense, but Marion's offense has just been unstoppable so far in this game. And, uh, Coach Platt calls another full timeout, and we will take that along with him. Again, Foresters trail 21 to 40 here in Platt Arena. We will be right back. The Global Initiatives uh, degree that we're offering is uh, seeking to equip folks who are interested in applying a, a ministry education to uh, cross-cultural work. So somebody who's looking to uh, 
do holistic ministry somebody who's looking to engage in the business for transformation or business as missions model would find some equipping through our global initiatives and degree. Our global youth ministries degree is designed to prepare people for leadership in youth ministry quite simply anywhere in the globe. It's for men and women who are already in youth ministry or for people who are simply preparing to leave youth ministry. One of the things I like about the pastoral leadership track is that Luke and Karen who worked on developing it consulted with church leaders so that people preparing for ministry uh, leadership in the church would have the skills and the knowledge that they need. Some of what uh, I'd want our program to be known for is, is being really clear minded. Back here at Plateau Arena, five minutes, 16 seconds left to go here in this first half. And the Foresters are struggling. Yeah, struggling is a good way to put it. As we talked about a second ago, you know, they're not playing really bad defense. They've had a couple, you know, lapses on, different, on individual possessions. But really as a whole, they've played good defense. They're closing out pretty well. But Mariners just hitting almost everything they're putting up right now. Here's Daniel Wolf for the turnaround shot. Again, really having to squeeze through a couple Marion defenders right there. Diamond with the ball. Now to Earls. Earls guarded by Coverstone. Now swung all the way over to Stowers. Back to Earls, trying to drive in. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Jordan with the basketball, stolen away by Daniel Wool. And that just adds to his total for this season. That is 42 steals for him. Devin Murder now with the basketball. Over to Tyler. Back down to Daniel Wool. Cross court pass to Devin Murder to Wool again. Connor Platt. Skip pass over to Coverstone for three, and that's good. That's what Mason Coverstone needs to see. He's had a couple shots that he's put up and missed so far, and that's a good one for him to, to get in there. Now Forcers really just need to focus on getting a few stops just to get themselves back into this ball game. Guyman with the ball, stripped away by Coverstone. Connor Platt with the ball, thinking about driving it in. Almost loses the ball off of his foot. Coverstone with the ball, now down to Wool. Skip pass all the way over to Connor Platt, and that three is good. And that cuts the lead down to 11. So some signs of life here from the Foresters with just under four minutes left to play in the half. Lead is now down to 11 points. And Tim Crowley with the ball, now to Guyman. Now again, Foresters need to get a stop here on defense, whether that's getting a steal, forcing on some other turnover, or just getting a rebound. It's not going to happen with that shot from West Towers. But if they can cut this lead down to under 10 before halftime, that'll be a huge morale boost going into, going into the locker room. Connor Platt with the basketball over to Murder, now to Wool. He gives it up to Devin Murder. Devin trying to make something happen right here. Passed it all the way to Coverstone. Seven seconds on the shot clock, stolen away by Crowley. Crowley goes up, given to Earls. He goes up for three, no good. Rebounded by Daniel Wool. And we've seen a couple passes now that. Uh, Mason Coverson hasn't been able to really to corral in. He's got to get those down. Could really cost his team some points here down the stretch. And there's Connor Platt, yet another three for him. That's going to be a 30 second timeout taken by Marion. Uh, and they were definitely needing that. Huntington has definitely started to go on a good run, especially for the better. They just, I, I still can't believe they're in the first 10 minutes, I would say, of the first half. Huntington struggled out of their minds to make any shot, really. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Marion could not miss at all. Yeah, very, very poor start for Huntington offensively and a very, very hot start for Marion. So and we're, seeing, we're seeing Marion start to cool off a little bit here, at least not getting their shots from the outside. Those are forcers giving a, doing a good job taking those away. Uh, but still, a great, great uh, hot start here from, Mar from the Marion Knights, and Forcers doing their best to claw back into the game right now. Foresters really just need a few more stops just to get them spelt, get themselves back into it. Only down by 10 now with a little over uh, two and a half minutes left in this first half. Number four, Stowers bring the basketball up for Marion. 
Fearing made a couple of mistakes too, and Huntington was able to take advantage of those, being able to steal the ball away. Bell with the basketball, and now it's stolen by Devin Murder. Daniel Wool with the basketball, and an easy layup for him. What, what I love about Devin Murder right there is he kept the ball high. Yeah. When you keep the ball high, you keep it out of trouble. Definitely. Definitely. Never want to bring the ball low, whether it's on a steal or a rebound or whatever. Got to keep it high, keep your elbows up. Great job from him and great finish there from Daniel Wool. Ball swung all the way over to Green. He, he shoots up a three. Same team saved by Daniel Wool. Yeah, Dan, Dan Wool went up to about the fifth or sixth row there after saving that. But. And the foul will be committed by number four, Wes Stowers. That is his first personal foul. Team fifth. Coverstone inbounding the basketball. Now over to Wool. We'll pass it to Connor Platt. Connor handed the ball off to Devin and now to Danny Wool. Tyler Aaron's really just struggling in this offense to know what to do. Connor Platt misses his shot. The ball was rebounded by number 22, Green. Stowers with the ball. Giving it up to Crowley. Green with the basketball, driving baseline, almost stolen away by Murder once again. And that will be a jump ball violation, and that will go to the Foresters. Yeah, great job there from Tyler Aarons getting down, getting, getting dirty on the floor for that one. Struggled offensively, but he has played a pretty solid defensive game and really like seeing, seeing him make the hustle plays like that. And yeah, hopefully that'll make up for the miscommunication that he had during the offensive side. Tyler just struggling from both ends of the court right now. Not able to make any of his threes to this point. Really just trying to, to find his rhythm right now. Yeah. Taking a quick little break here to clean up some sweat on the floor. One of the things that I remember from a couple of years ago, if you are familiar with Huntington basketball, uh, Shane Merriman, he was uh, always uh, a great player here at Huntington, but uh, whenever he would wipe the floor with the towel, he would end up just wiping his face off too, and that was one of the <laughs> nastiest things I think I've ever seen watching Huntington basketball. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that, but you know, teach his own. <laughs> Daniel Wool not able to make his three-point attempt. Really don't see him taking too many of those. Now number 10, James Crowley. One of the timeout, the official wasn't sure what he was saying, wasn't sure if he was saying side out or timeout. So Marion does call it a full timeout, and we will take it right along with them. Forster's trail 34-42 with 34 seconds left. Watching us at FDN Sports, really appreciate you, and also we appreciate our listeners at 105.5 WQHU. Really appreciate the support that you ha all have given us over the years, and everything that you have uh, said to us to make our program just that much better. Number four, Wes Stowers with the basketball for the Knights. 30 seconds left to go in this first half. A 13 second differential between the shot clock and game clock. 
Stowers with the basketball, and that three is good. Yeah, he had way too much time to shoot on that. Forrest has got to do a better job uh, on the screens. 12 seconds on the game clock. Connor Platt with the basketball. Now seven seconds. Devin Murder, Tyler Ahrens. Mason Coverstone now puts it up for two. No good. And that will be the end of the first half. Your Foresters, Royal Marion, 34-45 at the end of the first half. When we come back, we will be back with some halftime statistics about both teams uh, and just some more talk about the first half. Stay with us here on FDN Sports. The alumni office at Huntington University is really here to stay in touch with the alumni and graduates as well as provide resources to them so they can reconnect. It's just really important to us that we keep in touch with them and then let them know what's going on on campus as well. Things that they might want to continue to stay involved with or maybe participate in an alumni gathering. I started getting involved as an alumni board member. And we would do various projects throughout the university, throughout the year. Just being able to meet people who graduated and to listen to their stories about the university, back then the college, and how it's grown today, it just, it's really an honor and a privilege to be a forester. I knew that this was going to be the university that I was going to graduate from. And I have friends here that will be lifelong. We have a lot of people that ask us, what does DMA mean? That's a really good question. Um, More than just you know the study of film or animation. DMA is uh, digital media arts. It's a relatively new term. I mean, it's it's been a program here at Huntington for probably eight years. It is. A, a look into a, a whole new culture. We are the fastest growing major on campus, and I think that has to do with the times. 
Isn't the famous quote by Plato that uh, the storytellers change the culture? This is a time in the history of our people when we really want to tell story. Story? The story is what matters so much. It's expanded in such a way um, that we're just discovering what these tools can do. Just now finding out. Um, what it means to be a digital filmmaker or a digital animator or a digital broadcaster. I thought I knew what it meant. I thought it meant VeggieTale videos meets gaming meets Hollywood film. And then we hired a couple guys from VeggieTales, Steve and Brian. And when I was first asked to come and help start the program in digital media, I thought, I'm an animator, what do I know about digital media? Well, it turns out that animation is digital media. We started the program in 2005. Uh, there were a handful of students that were chomping at the bit. I just knew that there was something happening in the world of web and animation and film and television and how do we make this all come together and that's really was the birth of digital media arts. We start with a conversation about what that means, what are the responsibilities of, of being a media maker in this culture. We offer not only technical training, but we offer all kinds of theory about why you do what you do. We read these abstracts. We're trying to help students put on their lens uh, as an artist and go, how can I kind of make the connection between my faith and my art and what does that look like? But from there, we start to go in very separate ways. The animators tend to have much more of an interest in the graphic arts, in drawing, and creating their own images. When we launched the, the animation side of things, we wanted to make a clear footprint in this uh, arena of play. Sort of like kindergartners for college students. My grandpa, um, he really, really likes dynamite. So that's where the traditional media, the clay, the sand, those kind of things came in as a, as a great introduction and as a way to sort of capture the enthusiasm that the, that the students were bringing to this medium. I had a lot of interest in illustration, animation, fine arts, and the thing about this program is it ties a lot of those elements together. So that, that back and forth between the analog and the digital world um, in, in so many different ways. It's really, really exciting right now. The technology is making it very doable and it's making for work that um, it's animation we've never really seen before. It's kind of cool. This is tremendously important to think about. We put it off. Death is swept under the carpet in our culture, in the hospital. They try to keep you alive as long as possible in utter desperation. They won't tell you that you're going to die. I think film uh, has a very unique place in the prism of digital media arts. It gives our students a lot of opportunities to do hands-on learning, so it's very kinetic. I think that comes for one reason, um, because of the accessibility towards, um, you know, um, career equipment. With the time that you're here, you're able to take on uh, so many different positions. I love it when I'm hearing students just talk about the fact that, yeah, I'm director of photography on this film, but I'm doing production design on this other film, and I'm helping this student with their story, and it's just so multifaceted. All the positions are open to you. There's not a specific route you have to take, and that will help you understand what you like and what you don't like. I remember when the school asked me what my favorite movie was, I, I said Transformers. I, I kind of regret saying that now. I just thought, like, you know, the main purpose of filmmaking is visual effects. Through my time over here, I learned that, you know, storytelling is so much more than that. The most recent adaptation is our broadcast fusion media major. So we've taken the last 18 months and completely rebranded our broadcasting major into a broadcast fusion media. We're not interested in, in teaching you how um, the business will look now when you leave. We're interested in teaching you how the business will look in 10 years. And it is fusing together photography, meets cinematography, meets podcasting and web video. Fusion Media is the next thing for students that want to work in advertising agencies, church media, and definitely be a part of, of a creative class. I am really excited uh, about the future of digital media arts. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on camera. Um, I'm saying that because it's true. Um, we are entering uh, in what could be a golden age, um, not only for just cinema in general, 
um, but uh, for Christian filmmakers. students to come and study with us here at Huntington. We're looking for a passion for storytelling, a commitment to the journey, which is long and lifelong, because being a filmmaker is a lifestyle choice. I really feel that it's not just the stories we tell, it's how we move through the industry, it's how we treat other people that we work shoulder to shoulder with. Right now we can't even begin to imagine the changes that are coming. We only know that they are coming. So empowering our students to be lifelong learners is what we're all about. We are living in one of the most fascinating times in the history of man. People really need stories right now to help us understand the confusion, the zeitgeist of confusion of our times. And what better way to tell stories than with picture and sound? I know, I get excited about it, I get too excited about our program, but I am excited about our program. It's unique, it's compelling, it's different, it's hands-on. It's a program that you can come in and find your voice. And use those authentic voices to be able to communicate everything that we need to be more human, to be more fully alive in the world. Um, that's pretty much it, I mean, that really. Chapel is important because it gives us that moment as a corporate body to come together, to be unified uh, under one sole purpose, and that purpose being the worship of God. You know, we have many different majors, many different job responsibilities that we do here, but the one thing that we all have in common is our love and affinity for the Lord. And it's, it's, it's important because it gives us an opportunity to express that at the same time in the same location. And so there are some elements that are important to have um, as, as a foundation in any service. Number one is Jesus. If Jesus isn't magnified, glorified, honored, and worshiped in the, any setting, then that's not the type of service that we want to uh, have demonstrated here. So Christ has to be the chief cornerstone of everything that we do in the service. It flows around, it receives its instruction from Christ. Uh, so my, my real answer is Jesus. Jesus has to be present, right? Uh, and we who facilitate, whether it's Joyful Noise, whether it's myself speaking or other speakers, I, I hope that we are being guided and led by the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, I would say it's good. Welcome, Flat. Welcome back to the halftime show here in Flat Arena. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Your Foresters are trailing the Marion Knights 34-45 uh, at the end of one half. And uh, you know, Aaron, what, what can you say about this first half? That really just like, what's your opinion about this first half? Because just so much has happened in that first half where Huntington, they really just struggled to score. They got off some great shots, but just weren't able to score. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Marion, like, started off really, really hot at the beginning of this game. Right. Yeah, if you're, well, one, if you're Huntington, you're really frustrated. You're frustrated and disappointed that you're letting a team that you already beat at their place come into your house, and uh, they're, they're up by 11 at halftime. You don't want to see that uh, ever, really, especially that the way they came out today. Uh, a little bit a little bit sloppy, a little bit lackadaisical on offense. Uh, just part of it was just I'm putting up good shots that just weren't falling, but definitely got to be frustrated if you're Huntington right now. And uh, if you're Marion, you know, if you came in here and said, hey, you're going to be up by you know, 16, 17 at some point, you'll be up you know, 11 at halftime, I, I, you're going to take that. A any day of the week you're going to take that lead. Uh, so they've got to be excited, but also they can't be uh, overexcited. They need to uh, continue. Pre if you're Marion, you need to keep putting on the gas pedal. Uh, you can't let up on that. You've got to keep this lead ahead of you. Uh, but then if you're if you're Huntington, you've got to do everything you can right now to claw back and get in the back in this game. Yeah, definitely. And so what are a couple of the things on the stat sheet that uh, when you really look at it, 
you're, you're thinking, wow, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, well, the, bi the big one, uh, West Towers from Marion, leading all scorers right now with 16 points. Uh, he's averaging 19 on the season, so he's almost there at that, at that already. And another big thing that stuck out to me, 58% uh, from three for Marion. Uh, they just really just lit it up from outside. Uh, Stowers had a few. Curtis Green hit two. Casey Earls came off the bench going three for four from three. Uh, so that, that's probably the biggest thing coming sticking out of the stat sheet right now. And then for Huntington on their side of things, Mason Coverstone has nine points. Daniel Wool has eight. Connor Platt has six. While Tyler Aarons has five points and there's only two of seven from the floor. He and Mike Bush have both been relatively quiet so far in this game. Yeah, going into the second, uh, going into the second half, really you're thinking about Mike Bush again. What you just said, you know, he was really quiet there in that first half. But in the games that he has been quiet in the first half, the second half he's absolutely exploded. Uh, I remember one game he had three points in the first half, and then he had 19 in the second half, mm -hmm. uh, and that's happened a couple different times for him, but also Connor Plot as well. Right, right, and yeah, as we talk about Mike Bush, he actually said about the first or the last, excuse me five minutes of the half so we'll see if he comes back in here to start the game to start the half off or not and we actually will see him check in right now so we'll see how that translates into a second half for him and for this team yeah, so going into the second half uh, again your forcers are trailing by 11 and the starters are out on the floor that's Mike Bush Tyler Aarons Mason Coverstone and Daniel Wool and also Connor Platt as well uh, so really Huntington, they just need to start making their baskets because they've, they, like we keep saying this entire game, they, they've made some great shot attempts. Really, their shot selection isn't that at all. It's just that they're not going down. Right, right. That's the big thing, obviously, so hopefully that changes. We saw Marion did cool off a little bit towards the end of the half, and we'll see how that uh, affects the second half here. Stowers now has the ball for the Knights. Using the screen from Bell. Bell goes up for two, and that misses. Rebounded by Mike Bush. It's exactly what you want to start off with if you're Huntington. Getting a quick stop. Bush over to Coverstone. And, Aaron's and excuse me, sorry. It was a, it was a good job um, defensively by really frustrating West Towers as well. Double teamed in the corner, ended up forcing the pass to uh, Patrick Bell, who then put up the shot. So really, if there's a guy that you want to, to shoot on this Marion team, it's it's definitely Bell. Diamond picks up his second personal foul, team's first, half's first. Daniel Wool has the ball, tried to get it over to Tyler Aarons, stolen away. Green has the ball, now to Crowley. Crowley goes inside on Bush, goes up for two, not able to make that, rebounded by Dan Wool. Bush with the basketball now, looking to Mason Coverstone, tipped away. Ball does touch on the sideline, so Huntington will retain possession. Coach Platt, again, not happy with that pass one bit. It's a really long pass, and so because it's a long pass, Marion has plenty of time to go over and try to attempt to steal that pass. Bush with the ball now. Gets the ball tipped away by Green. Wool with the ball. Really, again, ill-advised pass, just passing off of Tyler Aaron's foot. Results in a turnover. Green with the basketball now. Back to Stowers. And the Forcers defensively done a good job getting stops, getting rebounds, but they haven't been able to answer on the other end of the floor. So now, a minute and 20 seconds into the second half, the score is still the same, 45 to 34. Diamond with the rebound. Stowers was not able to make his jump shot. Towers does have the ball for the Knights at the moment. Now to Green. Back to Stowers. Wide open three, and he takes advantage of that. Leading now up to 14 points for the Knights. Bush really just frustrated with all the pressure that's being put on him to this point. Dan Wool with the basketball. Dump down pass to Tyler Aarons, almost a foul, but that was clean. Yeah, really good thing that the Forest was able to develop something out of that. Really kind of a broken play. Daniel Wolves had to go to the basket and create. A good job from him, and then a good job on the finish from Tyler Aarons. Green with the floating jump shot, rebounded by Macy Coverstone now. Mike Bush with the basketball, using the screen from Daniel Wool, passing it over to Connor Platt. He goes baseline, goes up, gets swatted. 
Stowers now with the breakaway transition shot. Blocked by Mike Bush, and there was no contact there. All, the only contact was Mike Bush and the basketball. Wow, yeah, Stowers really wanted a foul, but a lot of credit to Mike Bush. Great job defensively, and then good job bringing the ball up, finding Connor Platt. And that's going to be a charging foul. That's going to be against number four, Stowers. That will be his second personal foul, team second. Dan Bull will be checking out as Trevor Lockwood will be checking in for him. Bush with the basketball for the Foresters, passing it over to Connor Platt. Connor passes it directly to Green. Green goes up for a layup and makes it. Yeah, great job anticipating that pass from there from, from Green. Bush now with Aarons. Aarons tries to pile his way in there. And now a foul will be called on Marion. That foul does go against number 20. Sam Gun uh, Guyman, that is his third personal foul, team's third. We're really gonna have to watch out for that with still 16 minutes left in this ball game. Coach Carson Harris from Marion really, really wanted a travel there called on Tyler Aarons. Devin Murder comes in for Connor Platt. You know, one person that we haven't seen in a whole lot of this game is Kyle Platt. He's coming for a little bit, really, but he doesn't he hasn't made his mark on this game yet. Green with the basketball. Nice Stowers. Stowers makes a nice pass to Green, but swatted away by Tyler Aarons. Hopefully that really just gets him pumped up for the rest of this game. Yeah, great job there closing out from Tyler Aarons and not fouling. A lot of times you see that uh, guy getting a little overzealous and trying to go for the, go for the block, it ends up fouling instead. So great job there. Good. Good job controlling his body. Stowers to Green to Crowley. Back to Stowers, now to Green. Lots of passing. That's why this is their motion offense. Now to Guyman. Misses the two. Rebounded by Aarons and now passed over to Mike Bush. Four on four. Devin Murder with the basketball. Over to Tyler Aarons. Thought about the three for a second, but thought differently. Trevor Lockwood going right into Guyman. Not able to make that basket and rebounded by Guyman. Crowley with the basketball. Finally gets it to Stowers. Stowers fake outside, goes in. Bell now with the basketball going inside. Lockwood does a great job putting his body right in front of him and Guyman ends up making his shot. Mike Bush now with the basketball for the Foresters. Trevor Lockwood makes a jump shot. That's no good, just runs out. Yeah, I like that confidence out of Trevor Lockwood though. That's definitely in his range. He's a great jump shooter, great free throw shooter. Uh, those 15 footers are, should be no problem for him. Pretty rare miss for him. Crowley with the basketball, tried to drive inside but not able to. Finally passed it to Green and now to Stauer. Stauer puts up a three point shot and that's good. <laughs> Leads up to 16 now, 55 to 39. Marion on top. Murder with the basketball. Not able to use the screen from Aarons. Just went a little too high as Mike Bush has the basketball going against Bell. Murder for three and no good. Rebounded by Bell. You can tell Bell is really starting to get winded for the Knights. Blocked by Mason Coverstone, but a foul will be called on him. Yeah, he thought he had all ball and might have a good case for it, but. Now will be Mason Coverstone's first foul. Team's first of the half, and that takes us to our first media timeout of the second half. Your forces are trailing 39-55 with a little over 14 minutes to go. We will be back. The Alumni Office at Huntington University is really here to stay in touch with the alumni and graduates as well as provide resources to them so they can reconnect. It's just really important to us that we keep in touch with them and then let them 
chapel is important because it gives us that moment as a corporate body to come together, to be unified uh, under one sole purpose, and that purpose being the worship of God. You know, we have many different majors, many different job responsibilities that we do here, but the one thing that we all have in common is our love and affinity for the Lord. And it's, it's, it's important because it gives us an opportunity to express that at the same time in the same location. And so there are some elements that are important to have. Back here at Platt Arena, your foresters again trail 39 to 55. Really just a, a tough day for the foresters in general. The ladies ended up uh, getting beat by Marion as well. It's only by about 10 points, but still that, that really just hurts them. They were really in striking distance, but were not able to finish it as number 22 Green able to make his first free throw. Second is up and good. Devin Murder now inbounding it to Mike Bush, just trying to get something going for the Foresters. Yeah, Mike Bush has continued to be pretty quiet. He's got a couple assists here so far in the second half, but we're looking forward, forward to him start, to start scoring. Devin Murder now with a three ball, no good, rebounded by Stauer. Now Jordan goes up and is fouled. You can hear the slap all the way over here. Yeah, not a, not a bad decision there, trying to make him earn his two points. That foul did go against number 44, <coughs> Tyler Aarons. That was his second, team second. Number 23, Andrew Jordan at the line for the Knights. His first is up and good. He makes his second free throw. That'll take it to a 20-point lead for the Knights. And his second one is up and good. Rattles home pretty good for him. Now Bush is acting really, really low. Just his emotions, his energy is really just low tonight. Murray with the basketball. Daniel Wool trying to drive inside on Jordan. Goes up for two, and that's good. A great job from Daniel Wool. Just trying to create where there wasn't much else going on. Green now all the way over to Stowley. Jordan mishandles the ball just a little bit. Crowley now thought about going inside. Green does go inside, but comes right back out. Thought about a jump shot, but gives it to Bell. He's short. Ball rebounded by Connor Platt. Connor brings the ball up, does not have numbers. Connor gives it over to Daniel Wolf. Daniel goes up for two and is fouled. Foul does go against number 15, Patrick Bell. His second team's fourth. Really, Patrick Bell's played a great, pretty great defensive game so far. I did see him commit that foul there in the post, but he's often come out a lot of times on Mike Bush and done a great job moving his feet, not committing fouls in the top of the key. Uh, so really, overall so far, a good game from him. He's playing a lot of minutes um, and a lot of quality minutes, doing the little things really well. Kirazia comes in for the Foresters as Bull hits his second. And also, number two, Casey Earls comes in for the Marion Knights. Now, Stowley wanting to go inside, pass it back out to Ells. Now over to Jordan, he goes inside, dump down pass to Bell, and a foul will be called on number 21, Austin Kirazia. That is his first team's third. <laughs> Patrick Bell is at the line shooting two. His first one just rattles home. He, when he shoots his free throw shot, it's, it's kind of awkward a little bit because he holds it so far up above his head, and that one is no good. But he has some good backspin to it, and it's, I mean, it's a decent shot. It's just an awkward looking shot. It's all in the wrist. And he does end up tripping Mike Bush. 
As his third, team's fifth. Now number 20, Sam Guyman comes in and replaces Bell. Sam Guyman, he's a freshman. He's 6'7 out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Really has definitely done a great job as a freshman making his mark. Long two ball from Mike Bush goes in. Yeah, Guyman's definitely done, played a lot of quality minutes, and you can see why he's made the starting rotation. Guyman passes it to Earls. Crowley, and then now to Stowers. Stowers passing it back to Ells. Now all the way down to Guyman. Great ball movement by the Knights. And great recognition there from Andrew Jordan, finding Guyman all alone under the basket. Bush gives it to Karazia. He puts up a three. No good. And he thought he made it, and he just was running all the way back to the other end. Yeah, he's been another really consistent three-point shooter for the Foresters this season. He's done, done a great job developing that part of his game this year. And the reason for that foul is because Devin Murder kind of reached around the body of number four, Stowers. Whenever a ref, whenever an official sees that, he's most likely going to call a foul. Almost like when you're trying to swap down to steal a basketball, he's going to call that every time as well. Guyman with the basketball over to Green. Now to Stowers. Stowers almost did a pullback jump shot. Blocked by Mike Bush. Yeah, great individual defense there from Bush. Great job getting through the defense there as well. Connor Platt with a long two. And that's really, you know, that's kind of hurt Huntington a little bit. Just they need to take one step back, and that's going to be a three-point shot every time. And they're having no problem making those. That's swatted away by Dan Wall. That was way too easy there for Dan Roll. I saw, it, saw it coming up. He timed it perfectly. Great job from the senior. Devin Murder checks out, and Mason Coverstone comes in for him. 15 seconds left, sorry, 17 seconds left on the shot clock. Ball batted out of bounds by Dan Wool. Guyman has the ball, now over to Green. Green almost wanting to use the screen from Jordan, but takes it in and is fouled by Austin Karazia. I thought that from here they looked like pretty good defense. I thought he was straight up and got all ball, but we're a bit further away from, from the play than the official was, so I trust he made the right call. That will be Austin's second personal foul, team's fifth. Both teams have five fouls here in the second half. Number 22, Green. His first free throw is up and good. Now Green about ready to attempt his second free throw, and that one's up and good. Marion up 47-64. Really, Huntington, they just need to get a strand of stops uh, and get some buckets because they are just struggling from all cylinders here in the second half. Mike Bush gives it down to Dan Wool. Dan passes it out to Connor Platt, and that's no good. Rebounded by Guyman. Yeah, shooting woes continue for Huntington, just not able to consistently put the ball in the bucket. Green with the basketball. Picked set by Jordan. Now Ellis has the ball, almost traveled. Jordan with the ball, he'll attempt a three-point shot, no good. And that is going to be Forrester's ball. Tyler Aarons will return for the Foresters as he checks in for Austin Jarazia. And Andrew Jordan actually came up a little bit gimpy after that shot after he fell over and looks like he'll be okay. He's going to stay in the game. Mike Bush bringing up the basketball. Gives it to Tyler Aarons. He keeps the ball high, which is great, but unable to make his shot. That should be a jump ball. Both players had the ball. And that was all ball as well. 
Tyler kind of trying to yank it away there for a second, but Guyman really just had a good hold of it as well, and he was not going to let that ball go. I well, definitely like seeing that that fight and the, the competitive nature out of those two players going to the floor, but I'm glad no one was hurt either. Yeah, two very young players as well. Dan Wall has the ball now, goes up for two, and actually he tried to pass that ball to Tyler Aarons. He was right there, and I'm not sure why he didn't just go up and try to give that layup a shot. Yeah, I really like the, the idea of trying to get Aarons involved, trying to give him an easy bucket to, to kind of get back on track with this game, but really Dan Wall was trying to do a little bit too much there. Really needs to know when to know when to just you know take the shot. Well, and at this point, you need all the points you can get. So exactly. I mean, I know you're trying to be a team player, but still, if you're right there, if your hand is right next to the rim, don't try to pass it. Just go right on up with it. Green has the ball for the Knights. Pass it right back out to Crowley. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Crowley passing it into Bell. He goes up for two, misses. Wool was not able to keep a hold of that rebound and ended up stepping out of bounds before he touched the ball. Kyle Platt will return for him. But Dan Wool just, just really frustrated with himself today. He is frustrated just that nothing is going in for him or his team. Ten Crowley pass it over to Green. Green going inside, dumping the ball down to Bell. Bell goes up for two, a little hard against the backboard. Bush has the ball. Now to Coverstone, back to Bush. I thought about going inside, but now over to Coverstone, up for three. That's no good, it's just long. And a foul will be called on Kyle Platt. Yeah, Platt's really couldn't believe that. I mean, he thought he had a good rebound there. It looked like he did from here as well, but. And that's just kind of been the story of the Foresters so far in this game. It's just been one thing wrong after another. Number four, Crowley with the basketball. Crowley really just wanting to go in and do something himself, but all of a sudden he passed it out to Green. Now to Stowers. Stowers goes up for a three-point shot. Misses, rebounded by Connor Platt. Bush with the basketball. Connor Platt now. Pass it to his brother and pass it right on back. Now passing it back to Kyle, and that's good for three. A good ball movement there between the brothers Platt and resulted in a three-point shot from Kyle there. The the older of the two, and now we're at to see Coach Platt take a 30-second timeout, we'll just keep it here. Yeah, it's, it's been a really tough game. We've been saying it all game long. Forster is trailing 50 to 64 right now. Uh, and it's just, it's hard because nothing is going in, nothing's going in your way, and you know, sometimes that will happen. But it, it all depends on how you bounce back from that. How, how are you going to go through that? Are you just gonna give up? Are you gonna keep going through the pain and are you gonna keep trying your hardest and just playing your best? Because at this point, that's all your coach can ask from you. And that will go into the kind of playing time that you will receive for the next few games. If you're struggling and he sees that you're still playing your heart out, really, I mean, it, it's hard to say that, but honestly, that's what he looks for in these kind of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the game's not over yet. Still eight and a half minutes to play, down by 14, 64 to 50 here. And really, I really do like the, the ball movement that we saw in the last couple of possessions from the Foresters. Uh, they didn't all result in points, but got some open shots. Really like seeing the ball move, kind of like the three-guard offense with uh, just moving the ball back and forth up on the wings until someone gets an open look at a three. It's Especially with the, with the shooters they have in right now, Connor Platt, Mike Bush, Mason Coverstone, and Kyle Platt as well. Really like seeing uh, just the effort to get those shooters open. Uh, and that was, that was a really good effort by number four, Stowers. He dove out of bounds trying to get a loose ball that he created. Number two, KC Earls comes back in for Guyman. 
Guyman deserves a break, definitely. He has played some great basketball here tonight in Platt Arena as Mike Bush has the ball. Really wanting to get it down to Kyle Platt. Finally they do, but a little higher than what they wanted to. Connor gets the ball and is fouled by Green. Green just had both hands on him. Now we'll take us to our under eight media timeout. Forcers trail 50 to 64 with a little under eight minutes left. We'll see what they can do to adjust in the last eight minutes. Stick, uh, stay right here. My name is James Parker and I'm from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. I'm majoring in exercise science under the Department of Kinesiology. My name is Paris Williams and my major is Sports and Exercise Studies. Our department really comes in two different areas. The exercise science area, which is interested in the, the medical aspects of exercise. And the other side of the department looks at recreation and sport management, which is a little bit more in the business and the administrative side of sport. Growing up, my mother had a lot of difficulties maintaining a healthy weight. And then when I got older, I made it my goal to try and motivate her and help her. And in about a two-year period, she lost almost 75 pounds. I just saw how her life became better. And I wanted to be able to do that for other people. So it started at home, and hopefully I can impact a lot more households. I was an exercise science major, but when I got a job here as an athletic trainer, that kind of... 50 to 64, your Forsters are trailing the Marion Knights. Kyle Platt with the basketball, gets it to his brother. Thought about going down in. Gets it to Kyle. Kyle just loses the ball. Ball bounced off of Marion and it will remain Forster ball with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. And Kyle Platt had a really favorable matchup there going against West Stowers down on the block, but Stowers, great job defensively getting a hand in there without fouling. Mike Bush taking two steps and putting up a layup. Only down by 12, and really, Huntington, they need to make something happen here really quickly. Crowley with the ball. Goes to the inside, back out to Earls. He puts up a three, misses. Connor Platt with the rebound, passing it to Bush. Bush gets a screen from Tyler Ahrens. Puts it back to Connor Platt. He puts up a three. Missed. Rebound by Green. Green puts up the basketball to Crowley. He puts up a layup. No good. Rebounded by Connor Platt. Connor Platt sprinting down the court. Tyler Ahrens puts up a three ball. That's no good. Rebounded by Earls. Yeah, that might have been his best looking shot all afternoon and still wasn't able to drop that one in. Green now to Crowley, just trying to waste a little bit of clock, which is definitely the smart play by Marion. Green with the basketball now, thought about the three. Passes it back to Crowley. Crowley will take the three, and that is just short. It's Connor Platt. Actually, Mason Coverstone gets the rebound. They were both right there in the same facility. Yeah, really one of the things that the Foresters need to do is crash the offensive glass. We haven't seen very much of that in the last few minutes. They need to do a good job of that to keep the keep keep the play alive, get second chances, and uh, you know, just better their chance of winning this game. Kyle Platt misses and then goes up and gets his rebound. Could have been a foul right there, but that's really tough. Earls goes up, gets a breakaway, and has an easy layup. So now a timeout will be taken by Marion. Yeah, Coach Platt putting his case, trying to get a foul down there on that end. But really, that's kind of how this game has been. Not many fouls have been called very much. Only six six uh, fouls for each team so far in this first half. And actually, in the first half, Huntington only had uh, excuse me one foul called on them in the entire half. So that's really been just kind of how the officials have called this game. It's it's been pretty pretty loose with the whistle. A lot of contact. A lot of letting a lot of stuff go. Yeah, and it's been pretty tough. Uh, for both sides, uh, Marion, uh, really just they've been doing a great job all around, making as many shots as they possibly can, and just trying to, they knew, they know that they're on fire right now, and they knew that they were on fire during the first half, so that's why they kept on just jacking up shots because everything was going in, and they wanted to take full advantage of that. Uh, on the other end, Huntington, 
they were not able to really just stop anything because of that. And like we kept on saying during the first half, it's not that their defense was bad, it's just Marion's offense was just unbelievable. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's really tough uh, for the Foresters during this game, but they just, they really just gotta keep fighting through it. If they really want this, they gotta just learn to keep fighting through it. And the, the thing is, this Forster team is such a young team, and I, I think that we really failed to realize that Forsters only have two seniors, Daniel Wool and Austin Cherezina, but everybody else, there's so much potential there, and I just, I hope that they can learn from this. Yeah, and, definitely. And, well, the, and the game is not over yet either. Right, right. Got about six minutes left here to really see what this Forster squad's made of. Murder back to Bush. Bush puts up a three. That's no good. Rebounded by Stowers. Stowers bring the ball up for the Knights now over to Crowley. Crowley, Crowley all the way over to number four, Stowers. Stowers puts up a jump shot, misses. Rebounded by Bush. Coach Plot really just wanting Huntington to attack. Coverstone with the basketball, driving inside on Stowers. Huge mismatch. Murder with the basketball. Dumping a download to Coverstone. That could have been a foul. But he'll take the two points anyways. 54 to 66. That's another good job for Mason Coverstone finishing inside. He's really improved on that part of his game this year. It's been a very consistent option. And does a great job cutting back door and finding himself open on the, on the block. Stowers with the basketball. Thought about the three-point shot, not able to take it. Green now with the basketball, puts up the two. And the outside official is going to call that foul. That's gonna, against, go, that's gonna go against Devin Murder, his second, team seventh. So now Huntington will be in the, I'm sorry, Marion will be in the one-on-one -on -one bonus for uh, and whenever, for until whenever Huntington gets into the 10th foul, 10th team foul. Number 22, Green, able to make his first. Trevor Lockwood's going to check back in for the Foresters, replacing Tyler Aarons. Green's second free throw is now up and good. 54, 68, Marion still ahead. Huntington has yet to be ahead in this ball game. Mike Bush going up, and that's good. Another good job from him finishing inside. Look, draw a lot of drew a lot of contact again. Still no foul called, but he's able to finish regardless. So. Number ten Stowers. I'm sorry, Crowley drove in. Ells now with the ball, almost blocked by Kyle Platt. Might have gotten a piece of it. Bush with the basketball. Thinking about putting up a three, gives it over to Coverstone. Coverstone now into Bush. Bush, wide open three point shot, no good. Rebounded by number four, Stowers. And yeah, that's, Stowers Mike, that's Mike Bush's spot on the floor, too. Really rare to see him miss a three from that spot. will draw yet another foul. That will be number 10, Mike Bush, his first. Team's eight. Connor Platt will check in for his older brother, Kyle. Number two, Casey Earls at the line, shooting his and one. It is up and no good, rebounded by Trevor Lockwood. Connor Platt with the basketball, now to Devin Murder. Going inside to Mike Bush. Three-point shot is no good. Coach Platt really trying to emphasize to attack the rim, but his boys are just, his players are just not able to do so. Marion playing really great defense. And they're playing great defense inside, too. That's part of it. And when, when the defense continues to let you shoot from outside, you might as well take those open shots. I mean, they're... A lot of good shooters on this team, they just haven't been able to hit so far today. 
Five seconds on the shot clock. Long three attempt from number 10, Crowley, and that's good. 56-73. Marion has just been on fire tonight. Ball stolen away by number four, Stowers. Just the energy in this gym is so low. Stowers just wasting time. Yeah, two and a half minutes left. We actually just saw Coach Platt motion the bench, and we saw Ren Crump come up here to check in. So he'll be getting some minutes here in a second, probably right now with that foul. And that foul will be called against number 32, Trevor Lockwood. So number one, Ren Crump. Number 34, Kellen Brown. Both come in. Come in for Mike Bush and also number 20, Mason Coverstone. Yeah, we haven't seen very much of Kellen Brown recently. He's a guy that I was consistently getting a little bit of time uh, in that first half of the season or so, even in crossroads league play as a freshman. Uh, often coming in for a couple minutes in the first half and then not usually playing again in the game, but providing good minutes when he gets time. And That's a great acrobatic move by Connor Platt. Yeah, the freshman, freshman Ren Crump's going to pick up a, an assist there, stuff, get himself in the stat sheet. Ren Crump really trying to put pressure on four Stowers. I like the aggressiveness of this freshman. Crump almost getting a steal. Also blocked by Trevor Lockwood, but still Number 10, Crowley, able to make a layup. Kellen Brown now with the basketball, passing it out to Devin Murder. Devin goes up for three. No good. Kellen Brown really wanted that jump ball right there, but not able to get it. As number four, Stowers, with the basketball. A minute 20 seconds left to go here in this second half. Really just a lot of clock wasting is what Marion is going to do. Stowers with the basketball and a reaching foul will be called on Devon Murder. That foul will put Marion into the double bonus and that is Devon Murder's third personal foul. There's really just not been any good happening in this game so far for the Foresters. West Stowers is at the line, shooting the one and bonus. I'm sorry, shooting two fouls. Substitutions for the Foresters, number 24, Andrew Yoder, number 55, Luke Royst. They replace Devin Murder and Trevor Lockwood, and number four, Wes Stowers. His second free throw is up and good. Number 21, for Marion T. Cunningham checks in for number four Stowers. And Stowers, he had a great game. I mean, uh, honestly, yeah, he really had a really good game. Exceeded all expectations. Did a great job with uh, with Hawthorne being out. Really made up for a lot of his points. Uh, just fantastic game from the sophomore. Run Crump pulls up for three. No good. Luke Royce with the pull down rebound. That's a great job by the freshman. Number 22 will be called for the foul, Curtis Green. That's his third personal foul, team seventh. Substitution will come in for Marion. Number 23, Andrew Jordan, and also number three, Jake Mills. Jake Mills is a guard, he's a sophomore, 5'10", out of Noblesville, Indiana. Graduated from Noblesville High School. Luke Royce at the line, shooting the one in bonus. And it's no good. Rebounded by number 21, Cunningham. Earls with the basketball, now to number 10, Crowley. Crowley trying to put it in, passing it right back out. Huntington will get possession now. 35 seconds left to go in this ball game. Your Foresters trail 58 set to 77. Yeah, really not the game they were looking for. Really not the game anybody expected, I don't think. Really a lot of credit to Marion 
being able to come in here and get the win like this. Great job for Andrew Yoder as well, the freshman. Knocking one in off the window. And that'll probably do it for this game. Shot clock has been turned off. Run Crump, Kellen Brown still just fighting so hard. Really trying to uh, just show Coach Platt that they want more minutes. Four seconds, three seconds, and then that'll end up doing it. Final score, 60 to 77. Your Foresters are defeated here in Platt Arena. Uh, we'll take a quick break, but when we come back, we will have post-game statistics and also an interview from Coach Platt himself. Uh, stay with us for our post-game show. So one of the things that's kind of fun about our department is we have uh, regular gatherings. Uh, we call them Friday at Fairchild's house, and Dr. Mark Fairchild hosts these gatherings for our majors, and we get together, uh, I guess it's about once a month. First I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, we're gonna go hang out at a professor's house, um, but for my Greek class, he offered extra credit if we would go. So I was like, it's worth it. I'll take some friends with me and try it out and it was a ton of fun. I think that's one thing that's kind of unique about Huntington. We really are able to uh, joke and, and get to know each other outside of the classroom on a personal level. Um, we really become friends, I think, with our students. The experience of being able to sit in a professor's house and engage in scholarly discussion and informal discussion over um, something faith-based is, I think, um, very unique to this university. If you look at a variety of the research regarding the top skill sets that employers are looking for, communication always ranks top five. Many times it's the top three. These are skills that are far more important, not only in job, but in life, in family context, in social context, in professional context. One thing that's different about Huntington University as a Christian college is that we have a journalism major. Other Christian universities and the Council of Christian Colleges and Universities have a communication major in which you then 
uh, subspecialize in these different areas. We have an actual major in journalism, an actual major in public relations, an actual major in communication studies. Teachers try to incorporate different aspects of like the Bible into or, or core curriculum. There's so many things that can spark, you know, you know, excitement, enthusiasm. But here you're reminded that in all of that fluff, in all of that glam, that Christ is the center and Christ is core. One aspect of Huntington University that I think makes us distinctive is the fact that 100% of our teaching faculty have PhDs. Also, um, here at Huntington University, the communication department, we offer two very different perspectives on the same field of communication. So we have two professors here that view the field quite differently, and I think the students benefit from that. in the Gospels, and I see Jesus interacting with people. I mean, he was a really good communicator, and understood people well. That's kind of what communication is about, trying to um, be clear about what you're saying and understand um, people. And so by, by practicing communication, I think we can become better at doing that, and I can be more like Christ in that way. At Lakeview Middle School, I'm a 7th grade language arts teacher. Uh, I primarily teach 12, 13, and sometimes 14 year olds reading and writing. One of the unique things about the teacher education program at Huntington University is the uh, relationships that are developed between the faculty and students. They are super thoughtful people. They want to be a part of your life. They want to, you know, be your mentor and, and help you through this process of becoming the best teacher that you could possibly be. I have a very good relationship with a lot of my professors from Huntington and I think that's because they asked me questions that were even outside of the classroom and then after class like I wanted to tell We're, bla we're back here at Platt Arena uh, with Coach Platt himself and Coach just a really tough loss tonight. Uh, really it seemed like nothing could really go down into the hoop for your guys tonight. Uh, you know at, at halftime what adjustments were you telling your guys to make? Were you just kind of telling them just to keep shooting, or, or what was your message to the team? Well, yeah, I mean, I thought we had good shots. They just didn't fall, and uh, but we didn't come away with any offensive rebounds either. So it makes it really hard when you're trying to, it, to do it and you're just one and done. You've got to, uh, you know, get an offensive board there. But, uh, you know, the other thing is we just turned the ball over way too many times. We turned it over nine times in the first half and, and six or seven times at least in the second half. and. Uh, you know, you, you, you can't do that against anybody in a crossroads league or against anybody for that matter. And so the turnovers coupled with the fact that we got down, what, 12 to 2, and we just we went one out of seven from the gate, you know, out of the gate. And when you don't shoot the ball well like that, and normally we do here at home, and we just got dug ourselves too big a hole. And, and we're not the best grinded out team to try to come back. And, and uh, that kind of showed today a little bit, and obviously, and uh, but uh, yeah, just not a very good performance all the way around, but we certainly want to try to turn that around for Tuesday. Yeah, and uh, really, when you guys were first starting out, as you mentioned, you guys started out 12, uh, 12, 2 to 12, uh, and just it was unbelievable how well Marion was actually shooting the ball. Like yeah. really, everything was going in for them. They were playing loose. I mean, they, they, they're in a situation where uh, they probably aren't going to make the conference tournament. I mean, I guess they probably still could, but it, it has to have a lot of things go right. And then, um, you know, their their coach got let go here at the first of the week, and so they've come out and they just kind of hooping and playing. And so that when you play loose like that, and, and they got contagious. I mean, uh, Stowers was two out of three at the first half, and and uh, uh, you know the Green kid was two out of three, and he, Casey Earls comes in and goes three out of four, all from the three point line. That's huge, uh, but you know this is a good shooting gym, and they made it a good shooting gym. We didn't, and so 
uh, in just a bad day for us, but uh, something that hopefully we learn from. Yeah, and so this Tuesday, uh, yet another Crossroads League uh, game comes up, and that's going to be against Taylor here at the home court. Uh, and the first game that you guys played against them up at Taylor really was a was a pretty good game. What adjustments are you going to make from uh, the first time that you guys played them to this time? Well, we've got to we got to go back to what we didn't do well today, which is we got to make sure that we're not turning the ball over because Taylor takes care of things that way, and we want to make sure that we're not just giving them possessions and and being loose and casual with the ball. And then we've got to be able to guard their three-point shooting because they're a really pretty good three-point shooting team. And uh, you know, we're, you know, you're in playoff mode now. I mean, everybody's kind of really in playoff mode because you got a week of regular season left and, and you're trying to battle for position and who you're going to end up playing in a conference tournament and those different things. And so it, we, we understand that we've got to come with the right mindset and the right approach, and hopefully we'll do that on Tuesday. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully you guys will be able to rebound uh, just like you guys have been able to do come Tuesday against Taylor. So, Coach, thank you very much for joining us here during the postgame show. Yeah, thank you. All right, and we'll send this right on back to Aaron for some postgame statistics. All right, and as we talked about a lot during our broadcast, sophomore Wesley Stowers had a phenomenal game for Marion, leading all scorers with 24 points, also had seven rebounds and four assists. Uh, just a great, great job from him. Uh, Curtis Green also had 14 points, and Casey Earls had 13. Uh, all, uh, again, just great, uh, great job from, from their team. And then for Huntington, uh, Daniel Wool and Connor Platt led the way with 12 points each. Daniel Wool also had five rebounds and six assists. Uh, Kamason Coverstone had 11. And Mike Bush had a really tough game today, only eight points and five assists. And also, as Coach mentioned, they did have 15 turnovers as a team. Uh, the three-point shooting, as he mentioned, also not in favor for them today. Only shot 18% from three, going four for 22 uh, behind the three-point line. So all, all around a very, very tough game for the Foresters, but thank you for sticking with us today uh, and watching our broadcast. Uh, a little couple quick update from around the league. Uh, we're not sure about all of the games yet, but uh, Indiana Wesleyan did beat St. Francis at home 94 to 83, and Taylor beat Goshen 66 to 40. And again, Marion knocked off Huntington here 77 to 60. So it'll be interesting how all that affects uh, where all the teams sit in the conference or the Crossroads League standings. So our next broadcast here will be at home at seven o'clock. Uh, against Taylor University. Please uh, come back and tune with us again on that. We'll be back here live for that game as well. This has been the FDN Sports. Thanks for watching.